Hello YouTube, I got me a cup of tea, so you know what that means. It's time for the monthly stats. Let's do it. Okay, I don't know about where you live in the world, but here in the UK, it was freezing in May. Okay, maybe not quite that bad, but it was really, really cold much much below average so i'm not expecting really great numbers for this month let's take a look we generated a total of 901 kilowatt hours in may which was well down on april's figure but hardly surprising considering how cold may was our best day was the 31st of may which is when the sunny weather finally started and on that day we generated 47.4 kilowatt hours you can see it was clear for the morning and then in the afternoon there were some white fluffy clouds probably floating past which accounts for all the dips in the uh, output there so you can see from the green line there that my off-grid inverter is causing me to miss out on some solar production this is because the batteries were full by about midday uh, and after that it has nowhere left to send the power and so it slowly decreases the amount it pulls from the panels meaning that I miss out on some uh, extra kilowatt hours that could have added to my total this wasn't good enough to beat the best day of the year so far which was on the 22nd of April on that day we generated 54 and a half kilowatt hours but hopefully we can beat that later in the year the worst day was on the 8th of May where we generated just about nine kilowatt hours was that the same as your worst day it's a pretty uneventful day must have been sort of fairly gray all day long hovering mostly at around one kilowatt odd peaks going up to nearly two okay so let's take a look at how much we imported over the whole of may You can see that we basically imported nothing from the grid at all for the whole of May. So that's effectively a whole month off grid. When you add that to the running uh, total from the previous month, we've now got a continuous 51 day streak off of grid. And that's a new record. 51 days. It's still running. so. Let's see how long we can keep this up. Now, when I say off-grid, again, I mean virtually off-grid. We were still connected to the grid and we are pulling a very, very small amount of power uh, here and there, which you can see on some of the graphs, just like very slight uh, little bars at the bottom. Now that is a side effect of the way these grid-tied battery inverters work. Uh, I was going to go into more detail about just why that is in a future video. Um, so stay tuned for that one. It'll give some explanation as to why there's always a small amount of power being uh, imported and indeed exported. And so you can see that actually for the month of May, we did in fact import 35 kilowatt hours, which works out at you know, about a kilowatt hour a day. Uh, and again, you would have thought this would be zero as uh, we've effectively run off grid for the whole of the month, uh, surviving entirely on what we've got stored in the battery and what the solar brings in every day. But as I said, uh, there is this small amount of leakage and I'll go into why that happens in a future video. Unfortunately, it's not something that you can avoid uh, unless you literally have an entirely off-grid system. But that comes with its own set of issues. Okay, so let's have a look at the pie chart for our energy mix. You can see that 96% of all the power we consumed uh, came from our own solar uh, and just four percent came from the grid that's pretty good and that's about as low as I think I'd be able to get it 
again for the reasons I mentioned previously and I have to say that this also includes running two EVs so we've managed to uh, run two cars entirely from our own solar okay so let's have a look at where the energy we generated came from you can see that uh, about 66 percent of it came from uh, the biggest inverter my Solax um, the grow what one and two kilowatt inverters were you know about the same um, the grow what two kilowatt which has the vertical wall mounted panels on it is um, dropping down now because the sun is striking it at a very steep angle so they're not uh, they're not actually generating as much as the one kilowatts worth of panels uh, that are on the roof which are more optimal now and you can see that my new off-grid uh, array which is uh, sitting on top of my power shed is now producing uh, what six six and a half percent of uh, all of our power so that's pretty good so now let's have a look at the pie chart that shows how much of the electricity from the solar we managed to use for ourselves and how much was exported and you can see that uh, we did a pretty good job 93% uh, of all of the energy we generated we managed to keep and use uh, and only 6.5% uh, or so was exported and this was mostly at the end of May when we had a couple of really sunny days in a row and the batteries were all full, the cars were all full, the hot water was all hot and there was literally nowhere left to put it and so we had to export it but that's pretty good going. Okay, and the last pie chart is uh, where all of our power went. Uh, and you can see that uh, about 12% of it went into uh, the PHEV uh, and uh, nearly a quarter of it went into the Nissan Leaf. Um, hot water tank took uh, a good 14% uh, uh, but that obviously saved us a lot of money in gas um, uh, we boiled the kettle a lot 7% <laughs> there and uh, about 5% on the dishwasher 8% uh, on gaming and just 2% on the washing machine okay well that's it for another month I uh, hope you found that interesting. Uh, please let me know how that compares to your results for the month uh, in the comment section. Uh, before I go, I should just mention that uh, my monocle system um, is uh, now tweeting. So if you're interested to see what it tweets, then please look up monocle5 on uh, Twitter. That's monocle with an A and uh, you'll uh, get some automated uh, information coming from my um, automation system. I'll be adding uh, different kinds of tweets to it in the future, but at the moment it'll just tweet uh, a couple of times a day. But anyway, check that out. Also, before I go, if any of you are based in the UK and are thinking of changing your electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, then please consider using my referral link on screen now. If you use it, we'll both get £50 off our bill. That's pretty good. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like, uh, comment, share, subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.